Hi everyone and welcome. Shells and command line utilities. I'm assuming you watch all previous classes. Creating the root file system, the kernel now needs a root file system or an init RAM FS obtained by either getting a pointer from the bootloader, mounting the block device that was specified on the kernel command line by using the root equal to kernel parameter. How to create the root file system the kernel needs? The following roadmap will show how this can be achieved. Create a minimal file system to get a shell prompt. Add scripts in order to install additional programs. Configure user permissions configure network adapters and complete the best setup. After this, the system will be ready to execute the first program, which is usually the init executable. Any root file system will need to contain the following components. Demons, Background programs that are not under control of interactive users. They are created by either a process forking a child process that is then adopted by init or by the init itself starting another process. Init is a daemon that starts everything else and it's the ancestor of all processes as it adopts all orphaned processes. Configuration files usually stored as a text file under the slash etc directory, they control the behavior of all demons, including init. Shell. Program that takes input from the user and executes commands. Shared libraries. Most programs are linked with shared libraries, therefore you need to include them, otherwise these programs will not work. Device nodes. Special files that allow application to interact with devices by using device drivers via system calls. They can be either character special files, unbuffered, or block special files, buffered. Nodes can be created using make node system call. PROCFS, pseudo file system that presents information about processes and other operating system related information in a hierarchical file-like structure. It's usually mapped as a slash PROC and it's used to get and set kernel parameters at runtime. SysFS, Pseudo file system that represents information about many kernel subsystems, hardware devices and their drivers in a hierarchical file-like structure. It's usually mapped as a slash sys and it's used to get and set kernel parameters at runtime. Since the release of kernel version 2.6, much of the information has been migrating from slash proc to slash sys. Kernel modules. If the kernel is configured to use modules, they will be installed in slash lib, slash modules, slash whatever the version of your kernel is. It is possible to combine many of the previous components into a statically linked program. Assuming this program is called PROG. The monolithic program slash PROG will start first, replacing init. The program will be specified using the kernel command line init equal to slash PROG. This configuration should be implemented when a high level of security is needed as the operating system 
will not be able to start anything else apart from slash prog. Remember that we are replacing init. Users are free to implement whichever directory layout they prefer. In fact, Android and Linux distributions come with completely different directory layouts. The first step should be the creation of the staging directory, which for instance may be named rootfs. So you're going to be creating the rootfs and then you're going to jump into it and then you're going to be creating everything else. And then you're going to make sure that these directory are going to belong to root. The most popular shells to be run on embedded systems. Ash, based on burn shell and much smaller than bash. The full shell on FreeBSD, NetBSD, Minix and many other Linux systems. It used to be the default shell on Android until its version 4, when it was replaced by the corn shell. Bash, a superset of the burn shell with many extensions and advanced features unique to the shell. Ash, very small shell that can be run on devices with very limited memory. This shell comes with no support for I.O. redirection or pipes. Therefore, many commands have to include additional arguments to make up for this limitation. How shells are installed onto embed systems? This will be explained soon. Linux shells allow users to launch programs with some flow control being able to pass information between programs. As all shells need utilities to be able to work effectively, users would have to face two major issues. The amount of disk space that this collection of programs will need to be installed the difficulty of tracking down and cross-compiling the code of each one of these programs. Users of embed system looked for and found a solution tailored to their unique needs. Introduction to BusyBox BusyBox is one of the available solutions to the previous problem as it combines stripped-down versions of selected Unix utilities, applets, into a single executable. For example, BusyBox comes with its own versions of init, ash, ash, pi, dd, sed, mount, and much more. To use BusyBox, one needs to type the name of the applet after the name of the main application, which is BusyBox. So you have BusyBox, the name of the applet, and then the arguments that you are going to be passing to the applet. Now, for example, if you were to uh, read a text file using cat, then you're going to be typing BusyBox, cat, and then the text file. But we can make it easier. As the standard installation process can create soft links, the user will be able to omit the initial BusyBox. So here, as long as you have your path correct, you're going to be able to just type cut and the name of the text file and it will work. While the build and deployment procedures for this application will be covered shortly, 
let's take some time to dig more into the Busybox architecture. Each applet exports its main function following the applet name underscore main format. For example, rmdir exports rmdir underscore main in the core utils slash rmdir.c. The busybox main function redirects all calls to the correct applet according to the command line arguments that will be parsed and analyzed by libbb slash appletlib.c. To download busybox code, you're going to need, as usual, your git client, because you're going to be cloning the repository. And then you just jump into the busybox directory, and then you choose the version of your preferred busybox. Just press tab to see all available options. Otherwise, if you prefer to download the tar files, you can find the address at the bottom of the slide. To configure a build busybox for Beagle Bone Black, you're going to be cleaning the directories and then devconfig is going to create a very wide configuration enabling pretty much everything. And then you can run menu config. And then running menu config, you're going to be able to fine tune your configuration. And then you can build and then install. Of course, your cross-compile variable is going to change if you need to target the QM emulator instead of the ARM processor for the bigger bone black. Toybox. Toybox is a very good alternative to Busybox which implements the BSD license instead of GPL. Toybox aims to comply with standards such as the POSIX and LSB, rather than mirroring the GNU project. It has been included with Android since version 6. While the procedure to build and install Toybox is similar, to that one shown for Busybox, the Git repository and tar files are located at the following addresses. Bear in mind that the default installation directory is the USR Toybox. And this behavior can be quickly modified by modifying the variable prefix And that will be all for today. Thank you very much.